Hi, this is me Apriti from How to Electronics. In earlier video, you learned about SIM 7600 Fuzi LTE modem from MakerFabs. We demonstrated the 80 commands for making calls and sending SMS. You also learned how to make HTTP request. Now this video is the continuation of the previous video. Today, we will learn how to use SIM 7600 LTE modem for the Internet of Things application. This is basically a cellular IoT with a Fuzi network. We will use the DHT11 humidity temperature sensor and program the device using Arduino IDE and C code. And for testing, we will use an IoT platform called ThingsPick. And the data from the DHT11 sensor will be uploaded to the ThingsPick server using the 4G cellular network. So without getting any delay, let's get started. Do you want professional PCVs like this one that look so good? Then use the service of Next PCV. You can select the board size, any soldier mask color that you want, including something like red and green. You can select the thickness, and the PCV code will be from 2 up to 20 layer for more complex design. The finish quality is so good, and if you want better connectivity, you could also select some gold finish for the pads. The ordering process is so easy, just go to the nextpcv.com, then cut now. Insert your design settings, upload your Gorber files, and order now, and then receive the PCV in a couple of days. Welcome back again. This is the customized board designed using SIM 7600 4Z LTE modem, an Atmel microcontroller called as Arduino Zero. This model can be used for 4Z IT applications including call, SMS, and also a 4Z access to PC or Raspberry Pi. While purchasing, select the frequency band which is available in your country. I have added the purchase link in the description. Let's see the board details now. At the center of the board, there is a SIM 7600E version of the 4Z module, which is also the main part of the board. This is an ATSA MD chip from Atmel, which is 32-bit and called as Arduino Zero. This chip is NAU8810, which is low-power wideband monophonic audio codec chip, embedded here for audio support. There is a reset button for the microcontroller which will reset the MCU when pressed. And to program the controller, this Type-C USB port is used. And the other USB port is for SIM 7600 modem for accessing the internet connection with PC or Raspberry Pi. The device can be powered through 3.7V lithium-ion battery as well and you can simply connect a battery over here. To turn on or off, this slide switch can be slide and for call applications, an 8 ohm speaker can be connected here. And to send voice command during calls, a 3.5mm audio jack can be fitted with here. Connect a 4Z min antenna. And there is also an auxiliary antenna for a 4Z modem. And this is a place for third antenna which is a GPS antenna. This button can be pressed for resetting the 4Z modem but not the microcontroller. At the back of the module, there are some IC and card slots. This is a level shifter or logic level controller IC. You can use any 2Z, 3Z, 4Z SIM card and insert it in the slot. There are two SD card slots, one I used for LD modem and the other one is used for microcontroller. There are input-output analog digital pins for connecting external sensors, same as Arduino pins. To make this model ready for working, first connect all the three antennas which include two GSM antenna and one GPS antenna. On the back side of the module, insert a 4Z SIM card. Remember the direction of the SIM card by seeing this symbol while inserting. Now let's set up the hardware for the project. We will take the DHT11 sensor as an example here. You can use any other sensor whatever you think is best. So connect the VCC and ground pin of the DHT11 to 3.3 volt and ground pin of the board. Then connect the signal pin to the D3 pin of the Arduino Zero board. Now take a Type-C USB cable and insert it into an MCU board. A green LED will indicate the power and you can slide the switch to turn on the module. A green LED will indicate the power and you can slide the switch to turn on the module. When the modem requires a network, it will show a blue LED turned on and also a small green LED blinking. Now it's time to set up the ThingsPick server. So visit thingspick.com and create an account here. Then go to the channel and create a channel. Give the channel any name such as 4ZDHT11. In the field 1 section, give temperature. And in field 2 section, give humidity. 
slide down and save the channel. Now go to the API key section and copy the right API key. This API key will be used in the code. Let's move to the coding part. The first thing you need to do is to replace the API key in this line with the API key that we copied. Now in this code, you need to add the DHT one by library. This line defines the reset, power key, flight key, and also DHT sensor pin. Under the setup function, we initialize USB begin function to read data on the serial monitor. And we also set the input output pins. Using these AD commands, we will establish the HTTP connection and send the data to the server. You need to change the APN here in the fifth line with the APN of your cellular network. Under the loop function, we are sending the string data to ThinkSpeak server using the API from ThinkSpeak. And these are the set of commands to establish a connection and post data with the HTTP request method. You can get this code from the link in the description. From tools, select Arduino Zero with a native USB port. Then select the COM port again with native USB port. Then upload the code. Let's do the testing part now. For that, open the serial monitor. So if everything goes fine, that LT modem will start sending the data to ThinkSpeak server. All the stepwise processes can be seen in the serial monitor screen and the controller read the DHT11 sensor data and post it to the ThinkSpeak server with the HTTP POST method. Now you can go to the private view of the ThinkSpeak server. Here the data is posted after the interval of every 15 seconds. So this is how you can make an HTTP post to any IoT platform using SIM 7600-4Z LTE modem. All the project details, components, purchase link and source code can be found in the How to Electronics website article. If you have any question, comment down in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching.